The next example I want to look at is the case of symmetries of a square, which is a generalization of the idea of the symmetries of a triangle. So a square, let's see if we can draw a square here. A square has four edges and four vertices. Let's label them A, B, C, and D. And any symmetry of the square is going to rearrange these four vertices. But not every rearrangement of the vertices is possible because um, if you can't just, for in, you, you have to make sure that the vertices that are connected to each other move together. So what are the symmetries that are possible? Well, one thing you can do is you can rotate the uh, square around its center. And there are, you can, you can take it first to the square A, B, C, D. And then to the square A, B, C, D. And then to the square a, B, C, D. And then finally back to the beginning. So there are four, well, there's the identity map. That's the first one. And then there's the three rotations, R, R squared and R cubed, where R takes you from here to here. And then if you do r again, it takes you to there. So that's r squared, or r times r. And then if you do r yet one more time, you come back to here. And then if you do, do r to the fourth, you get back to r, to the identity. If you rotate four times, you get back to the identity. Now, one thing to maybe notice about this is that if you do the rightmost rotation three times, which gets you from here to here. That's the same as rotating in the opposite direction one time. So if you were worried about left rotations, a left rotation by one is a right rotation by three. So those are all of the rotations. Now what about the reflections? Well, you can reflect the square around its vertical axis. So let's call that V. And it takes A, B, C, D to C, D, A, B. And you also have the horizontal ref reflection, which takes A, B, C, D to B, sorry, to A, B, D, C, like that. So that gives you V and H. And then you also have the reflections around the diagonal elements, diagonal axes. This one, which takes A, B, C, D to, it leaves B and D alone and flips A and C so that's, call it diagonal one, well, D, little d1. And then there's the other diagonal, which leaves A and C alone and flips B and D. Call that one D2. So, hum, and I think that's everything because um, those are the only play, only, you're only allowed to do rotations reflections and translations, and translations here aren't going to help us because the square stays sent. If it's going to move back to itself, it has to stay centered at the origin. So if we make our list here, we have the identity, we have the rotation, the rotation squared and the rotation cubed, the horizontal flip, the vertical flip, and the two diagonals. So a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. And those eight elements form a group 
under composition. Now, we already know that composition is associative. That's a general fact about composition of functions. The identity element is just the symmetry that leaves the square in place. And what about inverses? Well, um, the reflections are their own inverses, because if you do h squared, you get the identity. If you do v squared, you get the identity. If you do d1 squared, you get the identity. And if you do d2 squared, you get the identity. Remember, when I write h squared, I mean h followed by h. So if you flip around the horizontal axis and then you flip back, you come back to the original thing. And so h is its own inverse, v is its own inverse, d is its own inverse for both d1 and d2. And what about r? Well, if remember we said that r cubed, this is a left rotation. So if you do r cubed followed by r, you get the identity. So the inverse of r is r cubed, and the inverse of r cubed is r. And finally, you have the, the, fourth, the, the rotation of two times around. And if you rotate around twice, and then you rotate around twice again, that's also the identity. So all of these operations have inverses. Um, and therefore, the symmetries of a square form a group with eight elements. One thing you might wonder about is, is this an abelian group? And um, in fact, it's not, just like the symmetries of the, um, uh, of the triangle weren't abelian. But um, if you work out the multiplication table, if let's just try an example. So suppose we do R, we do RH. Well, that means first do the horizontal flip. And then do and then do the rotation to the right. That's going to take us to DCBA. And if we do it in the other order, and we first do the rotation, that's going to take us to, this is HR. It's going to take us to A, B, C, D and then do the horizontal flip. That's going to take us to A, B, D, C. And as you can see, these are not equal to one another, not equal. And so um, even though this is a group, it's a non-abelian group.